For at least 500 years, there have been reports of stagmen who run wild with herds of British deer. The stories share a few common elements. Only one stagman is seen within a single herd. He walks upright on hind legs. His body is furry and his antlers are at least as large as those of the ordinary stags in the herd. Is this creature mythical or could it be a very real, unknown animal that has inhabited our woodlands and forests for as long as man has walked on these islands? In 1891, the Reverend J.C. Atkinson came face to face with a stagman whilst hiking in the Yorkshire Dales. His memoirs describe how he and his companion came across a herd of deer as they were making their way across a meadow. Suddenly, an antlered beast emerged from the herd and, walking on its hind legs, came up close to the hikers. Once the deer had retreated to safety, the stagman snorted loudly at the men and then trotted away, still upright, to the astonishment of the eyewitnesses. But some encounters with stagmen are not as sedate. During a fox hunt in the 1860s, a stagman pulled one young rider from his horse and gored him with its antlers before making off. The man later died of his injuries. His fellow hunters watched a large furry animal bolting from the scene on its hind legs. One man took a shot but missed. Following the incident, it was observed that the foxhounds were unnerved and the hunt was abandoned shortly afterwards. If such a creature as a stagman exists, it certainly influenced the legend of Hearn the Hunter. Shakespeare mentions Hearn in The Merry Wives of Windsor, written at the end of the 16th century. Hearn subsequently became a popular literary figure with attributes freely added by many authors over the following centuries. Hearn's progenitor is supposed to be Canunos, the horned god of the Celtic people, depicted as a real physical being on numerous artifacts. This cave drawing of an antlered figure discovered in the Three Brothers Cave in France is thought to date from around 13,000 BC. While these horned upright figures were found rendered onto an Iranian ceremonial drinking vessel dating from around 1000 BC. The Picts who inhabited Scotland between 300 and 900 AD, carved this stagman onto a stone found in Banaki. Is it possible that as man domesticated horses and cows, a hybrid creature, half deer and half man, also lived among these early tribes? Many ancient burial sites have deposits of both human and animal bones, including deer. Perhaps archaeologists are unwittingly separating these skeletons, whereas in some cases they belong to the same creature. Since the Middle Ages, the village of Abbots Bromley in Staffordshire has held its annual horn dance. These antlers actually belong to the reindeer, a species of deer which has been extinct in Britain for at least 8,000 years. Although the origins of the dance are lost in antiquity, some believe that it is a stylized worship of the stagman, who had to be appeased in order to allow hunters to take one of the herd he watched over. An incident in Perthshire during the 1920s is typical of more contemporary stagmen sightings. A bailiff had been tracking two poachers through the night and, 
At last, he seemed to have found one of the illegal hunters. In the early morning mist, Dan Meikle could clearly see a silhouette that he assumed was a poacher standing within a herd of deer. The man wore antlers on his head, perhaps as some sort of disguise. As Meikle approached, a gunshot rang out and the herd took fright and fled. And then the figure Meikle had been watching also ran, on two legs like a man, and as swift as the fastest deer. Meikle saw that the creature's antlers were genuine, that it was covered in fur, and that it had a short tail. In fear and surprise, the real poachers emerged from their hideout, and now all three men watched the stagman disappear into the woods, along with the rest of the herd. There are innumerable cases of abandoned children being brought up by wild animals and many creatures of entirely different species live in close proximity to each other, sometimes symbiotically. It would seem well within the realms of possibility that a furry creature bearing natural antlers could coexist with and even protect deer. It has even been suggested that stag men might be so closely related to deer that they are able to reproduce giving birth to a kind of child fawn. Once weaned, these fawn children would be assimilated into the existing deer herd and would not be so visible to eyewitnesses until they reached maturity. Perhaps the fawns of Greek legend might also be connected in some way to a very real phenomena. Infrequently observed by the ancients, it may have come to influence their religious beliefs. Traditionally, a fawn is depicted as half man, half goat, but its association with sexual favors bestowed on maidens could be further proof of historical observed procreation between stag men and women. In A Journey Through Albion, printed in the late 1700s, the author relates a story told to him by a Radnusha farmer. Some years before, two young women from the village of Gladistry had taken the long way home after attending chapel one Sunday morning. Mary Evans and Jane Owen chose a path which took them along the edge of a wood and there suddenly appeared on the track ahead of them a tall, furry figure bearing antlers. Mary fainted, and Jane made a frantic escape through a hedgerow as the beast trotted on its hind legs toward them, making a loud snorting noise. Having raced back to her village and enlisted help, Jane led some men back to where the incident had taken place. They found only Mary's broken pearl necklace. Her body was never recovered. British artist Edwin Landseer painted the Monarch of the Glen in 1851. The proud stance and knowing, almost haughty expression immediately draw our gaze. There is something uncanny and at the same time all too familiar about this animal. One reason that the image became so popular over the next hundred years could be that it awoke within us a buried memory from our primeval past. A time when we recognized stagmen as being equal to us in strength, speed, and intelligence. It was towards the end of a hunt on Exmoor in 1903 that a stagman attacked some of the straggling riders and badly injured their horses before bounding off across the fields. Described by those who saw it as racing away like the fleetest of deer, a photographer nevertheless managed to produce this image under extremely poor conditions. 
Man's senses are conditioned by experience. Is it not possible that whereas we often choose to see what is not there, we cannot always see what is there? How many times have we watched a distant deer herd, unaware that one pair of antlers belongs to something neither truly human nor truly animal? A creature whose particular shape and silhouette has been burned into our collective memory from time immemorial.